Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this? You may ask, so I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Dawn DeVelchio. But before that, I'd like to say thank you for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform their present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life regression, past life regression, angelic Reiki, meditation, angel cast and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. And I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Dawn Del Vecchio, who will be talking about sacred feminine leadership and how by embodying the spiritual, your, your spiritual and in-world gifts, you can actualize your potential and become the sacred feminine leader you were born to be. Now, Dawn is an evolutionary astrologer, professional writer, retreat leader, business mentor, and marketing consultant. She's also a number one Amazon best-selling author for her book, Spirit, Mind, and Money. She holds a master's degree in shamanic intuitional practices and is a long-term tarot reader as well. Now, Dawn's work with Sacred Feminine Leadership supports women in embodying their spiritual and in-world gifts so they can actualize their potential and create businesses aligned with their soul. With testimonials such as, it was a lack of direction in my life and a feeling of being stuck that drew me to Dawn. Following some major life changes, I needed confidence for making decisions about relocating, the direction of my career, and how to be more successful in relationships. What I received from Dawn well, far exceeded my expectations. I discovered that my approach was based on skills I'd previously mastered and I needed to shift my mindset. Now I'm more able to make decisions based on what is best for me, my soul. I also care less what others expect of me, relying on what I want more than anything. And you inspired me to be a strong woman, to be feminine yet fierce. I always admired that you were both physical and very knowledgeable. I always left your class feeling inspired to be a better person. So without further delay, hello Dawn and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hi Ray, I'm really well. I'm really well. Thank you for having me today and for sharing those testimonials. It was lovely to hear that yeah. out, actually. <laughs> I know, so sometimes you, you, you forget how, how good you are. It's easy to not own it, which actually is a piece of the whole sacred feminine leadership it's like we have to own it too not in an arrogant way but in a in a a grounded connected way that says yes i am here to to be in service and my work matters in the world i have something to contribute exactly so before we get into this fascinating conversation i want to remind you that you can also ask questions leave comments and thoughts as both dawn and i want you to be part of this conversation so please do not be shy We'll try to say hello to everyone who says hello and answer any questions or comments live or once the show is finished. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then please give the thumbs up and subscribe so you can get updates on all recordings. So Dawn, why don't you tell us more about yourself and how about sacred feminine leadership and how it can help you realize your potential? Mm, okay. Oh, there's so much I could say. Let's see about myself. Well, my journey began when I had my son 35 years ago and I uh, start, I began, I joined a mother support group for women who had had home births. There were six of us and we went from initially thinking we were gonna talk about things like diaper rash and breastfeeding to, as I like to say, a circle of witches dancing naked under the moon. I love that. And well, it's, that's a little bit of exaggeration, only a little bit. <laughs> we, did become a, we initiated ourselves as priestesses of the goddess about, I would say, a year and a half into that circle, maybe two years. Hard to remember now. Uh, and uh, we really practiced the arts of sacred ceremony, of gathering in circle, of uh, circle principles, 
of ritual, of goddess lore, feminine, divine archetypes, and all of that. And and that was concurrent with my uh, undergraduate studies in feminist studies. So I was on the academic track of feminist, feminist empowerment and on the spiritual track of goddess awakening, blooming within us. And what was interesting at that time was that my feminist professors who were trying to get tenure in a very patriarchal world did not want us to talk about the goddess or any woo-woo stuff. Mm. That was not interesting to them. It felt very uncomfortable. So the bright side of that is several years after I graduated, moved away, I came back to visit one of my professors who was a hardcore, very intellectual academic. And she was like, Dawn, Dawn, look, I have a goddess book. So so the the seeds we were planting in the mid 80s are now, I'm so happy to see, really blossoming. And there are many women who are walking the path of the priestess again. And when I say priestess, I mean, people, there's some different um, responses to that. Some of them can be negative. Like you think about a priest and you think about someone who's controlling or, or maybe religiously rigid or... Uh, within a certain paradigm that that excludes rather than includes. But I want to clarify how I'm using that term in this context, in most Mm -hmm. contexts, which is a priestess is a woman who is dedicated herself to divine, uh, to to, to a spiritual practice and to um, serving in some capacity. Now, that could be raising a family. That could be... Mm -hmm active in your community. It, it doesn't mean that you hang a shingle that says, you know, Dawn Del Vecchio, Reiki practitioner and priestess. I mean, I actually call myself a priestess, but I'm using the term as someone who is actually a sacred feminine leader, or she's a, a woman who is connected with her sacred divine guidance and is mm-hmm. in some way serving and leading through role model, through like your, you know, the work that you do as a leader, there are many ways that that can manifest. And that's the work that I do now. So whether that's uh, helping women build or expand their spiritual business, businesses, or gathering women in exotic locations to circle and dance under the moon like wild women and, and <laughs> have a spiritual women's retreat or re, you know doing astrology readings for people. Uh, it it really all comes under the same heading of activating my feminine energies of intuition, inner guidance, receptivity, nurturing, gestating, in order to be in service to the greater good in these different ways that I work with people. Okay. So that, that's my story. Okay, I haven't disappeared on you, but I just realized that my computer is probably going to die in a minute, so I've just had to oh. plug it in. <laughs> Yeah, we we don't want we don't want that happening, and uh, um, so so yeah, I'm, I mean it's it's fascinating um, about you know um, you know the goddess um, and sort of like more feminine energy that needs to come in now, and that is sort of like like coming in now. Yeah, I, I would love to touch on that for a moment, if I may. Yeah, yeah certainly. Okay. So um, so one of the things that I talk about in my I also have an apprenticeship program, so I just did a recording for them today, actually. So in the in the priestess apprenticeship program in my retreats and other things I do when I do Facebook Live is this. The divine feminine frequency is rising on the planet. Now, that is not about women in physical female bodies coming to rise up and dominate men. This is no. not what it's about. And, and I'm sure, yeah, many of your listeners know, but just to clarify, this we are human beings. We live through many incarnations, sometimes as men, sometimes as women. And we've been living on this planet for like 6,000 ish years in a paradigm of domination that values the masculine over the feminine to an extreme degree. It's unbalanced. It doesn't work. The masculine principles have value the you know, uh, mind, focus, intent, action, manifestation. But without the feminine principles of receptivity, intuition, contextualizing to say, will this serve the next seven generations? Without that, we create unbalance. We create war. We create bombs. We do all kinds of crazy things as a human family. 
the divine feminine is rising within the consciousness of humanity. It must in order for us to continue as a species and to take care of the planet. And when, as women, especially women who have a, a level of um, um, autonomy and some ability to be financially independent and also be able to speak our truth. So many Western women and some Eastern women too, some women don't yet have access to this. But we are the ones who are embodying this first. We are the ones speaking it, leading it, showing it, demonstrating, rising up to, to live it. And um, But it's not just in women. Men are having it too. My, my husband works, does sacred medicine work with men. And that divine feminine energy of men reaccessing their feelings, resolving trauma, holding space for each other, holding each other in containers of love is happening, but at a much smaller scale. They're, they're, they're behind right now because it hasn't been safe at all for them to feel their feelings. Yeah. Right? It's been a lot safer for us. So we are leading it. And that's why this whole, so it comes back around to the sacred feminine leadership. It's like we are, we came, we chose to come into a female body this time. And if we have the, Spirit is calling us to lead in some way, to birth a project, to offer a service, to activate our healing gifts, then we are here to help support, among other things, that rise of that feminine frequency within us all and for us all. Yeah, yeah, um, m m most definitely. And, and it is a case of getting a balance between the masculine and feminine because every single one of us should be balanced and have the equal amount of masculine and and feminine as, a, as an equal, not as women trying to be men or men trying to be women. And yeah. uh, you know what you've seen in business over the years, which has changed a lot. You know, women who thought they had to get on in business by doing what men did and being as um, as patriarchal as as men, um, aggressive as men had to be, when really they don't have to be because they can embody the power of the masculine without taking on some of the negative traits of the masculine. Yeah, and, and I think we're going to see more spaciousness in the future for that. I mean, we have to remember, we're really at the leading edge of this consciousness. The masses of people are still very much in the dominant paradigm. And so to some degree, and I do have women sometimes come to me who they're having their spiritual awakening. They're working in corporate. They're acting like men uh, in many ways. And they start to get like, whoa, it starts to break down for them like they can't deal with it. Often yoga is the path to that awakening, by the way. Um, not always, but many times. So, uh, But th when they walk into that corporate world, that paradigm is still very much alive in that consciousness. And so... If a woman shows up fully in her feminine energy, it can feel unsafe. And I get that. I, I really do. So we're we're like we're forging a new path, all of us, women and men. How do we show up as holistic beings where we have activated within us some kind of balance? And so I think it's there's trial and error happening as well along the way for women and men. Yeah, yeah, because it's a completely new concept, or it's a re, it's a re going back to the original concept um, that that came in that got changed in into the masculine, and now it's sort of like beginning to come back to the original origins of equal of equalness. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that happened for me, and I could say for us, is at one of my retreats. Uh, uh, the goddess Isis came through with a frequency that we shared in the group. And I share now and I have a ceremony, an entire ceremony that goes with it. But I share it in my retreats and sometimes I do one off like ritual events. And it's a frequency. It's an energetic frequency that you share just hands to hands, like one person here, one person here. And um, it, it's to support the reactivation of that balancing so wherever you are individually, maybe you're very much polarized in one side or the other, it's to help reactivate a balance without it having to be some kind of like extreme, I say, you, you know, like a pendulum, right? Yeah. Some extreme swing to one side, like 
How can we gently, with grace and ease and flow, begin to allow these energies to uh, recalibrate within us? And so this is one of the ways that I do that. And I know I keep hearing it in many different arenas, whether I'm listening to people on YouTube or uh, following certain people or conversations with sister and brother friends, this concept of the balance of the masculine and the feminine is going on all over the place now in the conscious community. Yeah. It's exciting. Oh, it, it's, it's absolutely exciting. I mean, it's, it's, and it's exciting to be alive in, in this time as well um, with, you know, even with everything that's going on in the world, it's like, it's absolutely amazing because we're sort of like changing the whole, the whole system. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, gosh, something else is coming in uh, about this whole thing about leadership that I think is important to touch on. And, and I want to initiate it by saying this is one of my challenges. How courageous are we to shine our light? Because it is an exciting time. And many of us come in with incarnational patterning, we could say, of feeling unsafe shining our light. The witch burnings being a perfect example. I mean, many of us have actual memory of that or uh, even just subconscious, like how do we uh, undermine or sabotage? We'll only go so far with our leadership. We'll only go so far with shining our light. And then, oops, something happens. And it can seem to be extremely external. And yet, I, I, would, I would invite anyone who's resonating with this concept of empowered or sacred feminine leadership to look at where am I being called to lead and where am I maybe shying away, pulling back, dimming my light, taking two steps forward and then one step back. And again, I am saying this not because I've mastered it, but because I'm on that path right now. That is has been my uh, a piece of my journey. Yeah, because because you've been on quite a bit of a journey, haven't haven't you? Sort of like around the world. Yes, yeah. Well, I and, and actually, it's interesting. So I, I've lived in uh, Southeast Asia is my my heart's home, and I've lived in Southeast Asia. I live in uh, Thailand for part of the year. I go to Bali. I'm leaving for Bali in less than a week for a month this year. Yeah, Bali's beautiful. Mm. <laughs> Never been. Uh, and of course, I live in Sedona for most of the year. Yeah. Um, and what's interesting, though, is that I, I do host retreats in these wonderful places. I can also hide in those places. It can be easy to disappear in a foreign land. You know, I'm just like, I'm getting on my motorcycle, riding up to the mountains. Bye. See ya. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> so it's a dance and a journey for me internally as, as well as like literally physically. And I'm grateful for that journey. Many years ago, you know, oh, I'm I, a bunch is coming in. Hold on a sec. Yeah. So I, I don't know if you know, but I used to teach the martial arts. So I taught the national sport of Thailand, which is Muay Thai. Talk about a masculine energy. So I was a pretty intense I'm a teacher. I'm a, considered a master teacher of that art, although I don't do it anymore. Um, that's the attraction to Thailand that like there's some soul thing there yeah. for me, right? some incarnational stuff. Um, but uh, I, uh, so where was I going with this? So Thailand, uh, I went there to become a writer and to hide really. And so now it's uh a place where I do host retreats and do have a, a beautiful community of sister friends. Uh, Northern Thailand is an amazing place, many parts actually. Um, and I can, I, I, it's like I have to make a, deci a conscious decision that I'm not just going to disappear in the mountains the whole time. Yeah. So, so you, ha you actually have to show up and, and, and be you. Yeah. Yeah. Show up and, and, and sh again, shine the light. So, I'd be interested to hear from other people who watch this, you know, like, where are you being called right now? What, and, and, and you'll know it because it excites you. Yeah. 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 If, if, if it excites you, you know, that that's where, where you should be going, what you should be looking at, what you should be, should be going for. Um, and of course, a lot of, uh, a lot of people, especially women, aren't sure what, 
what what they you know what the, what they should what they should be doing you know how they should be um you know taking charge of, of their lives and that because they've been caught up in all the histories the dramas of you know from childhood to adulthood you know with work maybe with children maybe as partners and that and they kind of like okay i'm not sure how i can actually find out where i'm going on on my on my leader on my leadership skills you, you know so have you got any suggestions for, for women that are kind of like in that space yeah yeah thanks for asking so for me my modality you know there are many modalities you have yours as well my modality mm. is evolutionary astrology so i have a mind that can look at the abstracted map of all of those glyphs and symbols of astrology and just get it but it's been many years i've studied it too mm. so evolutionary astrology is based on the principle of many many incarnations and what we look at is this, we look from the outer planets inward. So we don't start with the sun, we start with Pluto, we go inward. And we look at what is your soul's evolutionary signature? Where have you been sort of working, developing, cultivating skills and abilities? What have you mastered? And what are you now wanting to activate, cultivate and grow? And by looking at the map of someone's chart, the transits at play when they come to get a cons consultation with me, and having a conversation with them, I have deep intake forms where I get a lot of information. We really look at what, what are the skills and abilities you want to develop. And then if that is something they want to actually turn into a business or a, a service or a new a line of education, like go back to school, we can unpack that together because we're looking at the energetic signature. So it's not like the chart says, you should be a doctor or you should be a whatever. But there's qualities that have to do with certain, like it's service and it's health related. And the thing that's obstructing you is the confidence block. And so let's look at where in the chart we see the allies to support you in overcoming that, what's called a karmic complex in evolutionary astrology. So that's my uh, my mod my favorite modality. I also do NLP and hypnosis and some other things, but I always start with that evolutionary astrology perspective. Yeah, that that, that sounds so fascinating and yes. and uh, amazing. You know, you know, as, as, some, as some people may may be uh, they've, they've seen me before and I've, I've spoken about. You know, as a child, I was always fascinated by the stars and the moon and. Um, planet, you know, if you get a telescope as a kid to to see. I wish I'd kept the telescope actually, because wow. that, that, that would be so nice to have a telescope now. But obviously, as you, as you do when you get teenagers, have telescopes. But what, right. What 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 are they? Um, so so, so yes. Yeah, so so when I hear people talking about astrology and that, you know, it's not something I've ever gone I've gone down. But it's so fascinating to, you know, to hear hear about people and the different types and different ways astrology can actually be used yes. um, in, in, in helping people, you know, not just to tell your your stars for the week. Right, right. Actually, thank you for bringing that up. There are many different types of astrology. And, and I want to make a distinction here. Now, I would think that your viewers and listeners are people who are going to get this, but I'm going to say it for the record anyway. Sometimes with a tarot cards, I'm also, as you know, a tarot card reader, mm. um, a tarot or astrology, people who are not in a spiritual state of consciousness see these as uh, superstitious modalities for fortune telling. Those of us who are actually working deeply, as you know, this is therapeutic counseling. Mm. This is soul counseling. Uh, to assist people in in recognizing their, in, in the case of evolutionary astrology, their karmic complexes, and finding ways, whether that's through NLP, hypnosis, ceremony, etc., to actually access and dissolve them. Past life regression, fantastic tool mm. to partner with evolutionary astrology, fantastic tool. Uh, so it's therapeutic healing, but it's spiritual healing. It's not talk therapy. It's not drugs or medication to suppress, yeah. for example. It's really soul level healing so that we can get online with our greatest gifts and become whole again as beings. Yeah, 
yeah, it, it, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely uh, more, more spiritual than fortune telling, um, as, 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 as it's been described over and over the years um, through, through history and in books and, and everything. You know, if, if, you, if, you, if, you, you know, if you think back to the original um, Roman Egypties and that, you know, it's always classed as fortune telling, but really they were helping people make decisions in their lives. Totally, totally. This is part of the, again, the sort of the paradigm that devalues the feminine. One of the things you do is you dismiss. You know, there's a quote from Gandhi that says, first, they, what is it? First, they ignore you. Then they dismiss you. Then they fight you. And then you win. And I think we could say that about the rise of the divine feminine energies. You know, first it's this ignoring, you know, women, go get the coffee, honey. Yeah. And then it's be, be dismissing, oh, these fortune tellers. Yeah. You know, and, and then it's like, oh, we got to start controlling. Let's let's control, like in the United States, let's control their bodies. Let's control, control, control. And, but it's, but it's not going to. It's not going to work because there's too much of us who are. It, it's coming from within. It's a a soul level awakening that's happening. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And no one can stop it. Um, and and that's the beauty of being alive in this time. Nothing can actually stop this this happening now because it's taking place. It's going to happen whether people like it or not. Uh, yeah. We we're just going to be moving forward um and, and things are going to start getting in, into balance ev everywhere and we see this by the way as astrologically um you know uh, january well 2020 altogether is a big year january 12th 2020 we have a massive uh event in the sky where the planet pluto is conjunct the planet saturn and capricorn with the nodes it's a, it's a i don't want to go into geek speak here astro geek speak but suffice it to say that the signatures are there of the uh, the deconstructing of the old hierarchical paradigm and systems in order to allow for this new age of Aquarius to begin to come in. We're already seeing it, but there's like it's it's a it's a marker point. Mm. Yeah. So uh, there are some astrologers who've talked about the the, the biggest events of astrologically of 2019 is the astrology of 2020 yeah 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 2020 is um is it, it's going to everything's been leading up to to sort of like really taking off um in in 2020 so 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 that'll be that'll be quite fascinating to see um where that goes in the world you know with governments and systems and 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 everything, yeah. This is going to be an exciting time, interesting, and exciting time. It, yes, and and one thing I would like to just add here is that, and I'm telling myself this too, that things will look scary sometimes out there on the world stage, and this is where it's really important that we connect with each other, that we really double down in our spiritual practice, and that we keep holding the light, keep anchoring the light, and trusting that the love and the light of the divine is flowing through us. No matter yeah. what crazy stuff we see out there, the fear is not going to help. No, exactly. And one of the easiest ways of not getting into the fear, don't don't watch the news or read the newspapers. Simple as. And yeah. Quite often people will be telling me stuff and going, really? I have no idea because I don't read the newspapers or, or, or watch the news. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, the world is fine and bright. Beautiful. Yeah. And that's how we anchor the light. I, I haven't had a TV in, in years. I, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Don't have a TV. Don't get newspapers. Yeah. No. If, if they were, if they start printing really happy news stories and all the positive stuff in the world, yeah, I'd start buying them. Yeah. But, but until they start doing that, no, nah, it's not, not, in, not interested at all. Um, in, you know, in that. So is there anything, um, else that women can do to um, actually, you know, tap into their feminine leadership leadership side? Let me uh, connect to see like what something really quick and, and easy. What I'm, what I'm getting right now is this idea, well, you can't see my hand is on my hand. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, just really for whatever's coming up for you, whether it's a challenging thing or an exciting thing, anytime we can take a moment, take a breath and tune into our heart space, or if it feels more comfortable, hand on the womb space, that's the creative center, the sacral center, uh, and just really take a few breaths. That inward connecting, the pause, the, the willingness to reflect and be receptive to guidance is the feminine energy. We are so trained with the left brain that it can be so easy to be like, okay, I'm doing task A, do, 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 this, 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 right, okay, finish with task A, boom, go to task B, boom, you know, what about pausing, what about going, what feels, what does guidance want to offer right now for me? Yeah. That receptivity, that's what gives us access to our greatest wisdom and it is that feminine principle. And when we allow it, all kinds of magic and miracles can begin to unfold in our lives because we are following guidance instead of just the noise in our heads. Yeah, and then that's, I think, the, big, the biggest thing sometimes is getting out of our heads and into our hearts because we have so much stuff going on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, oh. I think, must have been why I felt that hand on the heart hand on the womb space. I mean, I have, you know, that's the simplest thing. I have an entire practice that I do early before sunrise every day. I'm at my altar doing my anointing and prayers and meditation and reflection for sometimes two, two and a half hours. I realize not everyone can do that, especially if you have children, little ones around. But anything you can do to give yourself that pause, I always, when, when women apprentice with me, I have them, encourage them to set up a sacred space somewhere, an altar, a, a literal physical anchoring location in their home where they can sit before it and then do their sacred practice, whatever that practice is. So if you can, if you want to take it to that level, absolutely. And then if you really want to, you know, bring that feminine, that divine feminine active in you, Find a beautiful image of or picture of a goddess, a, a feminine emblem that to you represents that wise, sacred, feminine leader. It can be any, you know, it could be a, a live person. It could be a goddess. It could be whatever works for you. And uh, that would enhance even more that access to your own sacred feminine leadership ability. Oh, that, that's 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 brilliant um and you know those that have been watching this please do say hello so so we know that, that, that you're here you know because i've seen people watching but nobody said hello yet don't don't oh, be frightened if you want to... <laughs> yeah let me know it make if it makes sense or not <laughs> yeah i mean it makes sense to me but then it it, it would make sense to me um <laughs> as it is so as you know, I do guided meditation, angel card readings. Um, so each week I like to ask my guests whether they would like a mini guided meditation or angel card reading for themselves and those that are watching this um, live or on the replays. So Dawn, what would you like? Oh, I would love an angel card reading. Everyone always likes the angel cards. <laughs> I don't know why I ask. Might as well just go, should we do an angel card? Um, okay, so... Quick cleanse and a bless. So what does Dawn and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? What does Dawn and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good? What does Dawn and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? Okay, where are we going? Oh, that one. Standing out for us. Well, that's very interesting, seeing as you do a lot of traveling. Um, we've got faraway places. Get ready for new horizons. Oh, there we go. Look, there's <laughs> even the, 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 um, the sails there are from a, a Chinese junk that you would see in Hong Kong. And yeah. the, the rocks, the stone in the background, the karst, that's all like southern China, which are the people that end up populating Southeast Asia, where I get, where I love. So it's perfect. It, it is. It is absolutely perfect. So so for you, it, it's absolutely perfect. Um, in the obviously your next bit for um, traveling over there um, is going to bring some new stuff um, into you. 
Um, so that's so that's that's pretty that's pretty cool too. So I'll be interested to see what new insights you get whilst you're over whilst whilst you're over there um, this yeah. time. And for those that are um, that, that are watching, you know, it is getting ready for things to start changing now. Um, you know, new new things are coming in. You are going to be experiencing more and having more contact with people you might normally have had more contact with um so please let me know um how you found uh how you found that card um but i just love the way the angel cards come out for for for, for you know for perfectly what people need um to know at at this time um so dawn do you have any um insights or thoughts to leave for um, our viewers hmm insights or thoughts well definitely if this is resonating with you create an altar give yourself time every day to tune in and just be receptive and even if it's just like you know you got five minutes just say how can i activate how can i allow myself to just be in receptivity and presence right now so that would be that and then of course if you're curious about your soul's evolutionary journey, what you're here to be and do, how aligned you are with your path. If you're stuck in some way that you feel like you're not making progress the way you want, you feel like you're tripping yourself up or self-sabotaging, then definitely check out the special offer that I'm making for this community here. And that the, the link is rolling across the bottom of the screen, I see. It is. Uh, yeah, so that's a special offer. So I, the way I work with people, I have three hmm. different packages. And these are all a hundred or more dollars off of each one of those packages. So it's like a hundred yeah. off the first one, one fifty off the second one, two hundred off the third one, something like that. So they're really for people who are ready for women and men, but women mostly who are ready to embody what it is their soul is calling them to, and they want that guidance and support. It's quite a deep dive. And uh, I would love to work with you if that resonates. So you could at least check out the page and, see i tell you i basically say this is for you if and you can go through it and if it's not for you great you know you just you'll find your right teacher guide helper as needed yeah and i've been on dawn's website and it's a really pretty it's it's a really lovely website i have to admit it's very easy to navigate as well thank you thanks and that, yeah i quite like that i'm thinking mm, can i can i utilize any of that for my website mm. <laughs> Um, and that yeah, I like, I like the way the I like the way the graphics and and the words um, and the and the words of that. So um, apart from your website, is there any other way that um, if people want to connect with you, they can connect with you? Well, they can. I mean, you can certainly from the website you can find you my email. It's it's dawndelvecchio at gmail .com, So that's a possibility as well. And there are a lot of ways that I work with people. So you could go there and kind of snoop around too. Yeah. So does that, is, is that sufficient? Is that good? Yep. Um, are you on social media at all or? Oh, right. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> I have a YouTube channel. I have a Facebook page. I have an Instagram account. So you just can look up like for my Facebook, you can look up Dawn Del Vecchio. Uh, it's under my name. Uh, YouTube is Aruna Dawn 13. Um, but all my YouTube videos, they are fed right into my website. So you can find, and I do a lot of videos. I do a lot of videos on Facebook, Facebook live too. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook live. So you can, um, you can catch all of those. And what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll put the links into, um, the comments afterwards so that people just need to click on them and they can go straight in without typing without without typing it in so great so thank that, you that, that'll make it nice and easy for people so um so first of all i'd like to say thank you to everyone for watching this live uh, to a later date um and i would like to um and i hope you enjoyed it and found the words um that dawn gave you um insightful and that um, she can help you further on your journey and I would like to invite you to share this video, um, as I'm sure there are many more like-minded women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny and take charge of their feminine, their sacred feminine, um, just like you. 
And of course, if you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then please reach out and connect with me as I'd love to be a guide to help you um, find your path. Um, so you know, just contact me to arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video chat so we can find out more about each other and, I can, and how I can help you. And also, if future life progression interests you, then I'll be teaching a three day certified future life progression training, practitioners training on the 15th, 16th and 17th of November at the Claridon Hotel in Blackheath. So please feel free to contact me for more details and I'll put the link below. So um, again, I will also see you next Wednesday, the 2nd of October at 8 p.m. where my guest will be uh, the wonderful Christy Warnick talking about how you can discover the power within you. So again, thank you so much, Dawn, for, um, for, for being on the show today. Um, it's been absolutely brilliant talking to you. Um, and thank I you. can't wait to hear. You'll definitely have to come back next year when we, we've got that January 2020 done. To... That would be great. I would love to. Yeah. So, so, we, so we can chat about that. And you can also tell us what new things you um, you found on your latest trip over to Thailand. Will do. And that, so goodbye, everyone. And I will see you next week. Thank you.